Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Coffee with Coaches podcast. It's later in the afternoon, so unfortunately, I'm done with coffee for the day because I'm trying to be good. I'm your host, Kevin, and today I have with me Emily Harmon. Emily coaches successful high achievers to recognize the patterns and inner blocks holding them back from living a life that they love. She helps them achieve peak performance, experience peace of mind, very difficult to get to, to get in the same brain at the same time, and improve their personal and professional relationships. So, you know, modest goals. Emily, <laughs> welcome to the podcast. Thanks for being oh, here. Oh, thank you, Kevin. I like what you said. I like that uh, little questioning about like, peak achievement, but also in calm. And that's something that I've really discovered for myself in the past couple of years. And I love helping people with that. Yeah, they, they seem at first blush, like they might be a paradox, but really they belong together. And that's something yeah. that I think people like you are helping the rest of us realize on a regular basis. I think that's, that's kind of why I caught up on it. I was like, Ooh, yeah, there's a lot of, power. I didn't realize it. I didn't realize it. I didn't. I, I uh, have been my whole career, hyper achieve, 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 achieve and push, push, push. And I didn't realize it could be done with a whole different kind of energy. I thought that's just the way I am. And I'm no, I can't be any different. That's just the way I am, but it's not true. Oof, that, yeah, I'm, I'm getting a little bit, cause I have that same magic where it's just like, I had this image of myself for the longest time of the way that, that there was a way, not only that I was, but a way that things were like, this is right. the way that it is. And then every day I realize a little bit more, it's like, mm, look a little bit closer. <laughs> open yourself up to something maybe a little bit different, but we'll get into that now. I want to start with you um, by finding out how you got started with coaching in particular. A lot of people have very similar but distinct journeys from like what prompted them to not only like be helpful with their advice, with their sort of like lowercase c coaching, but what prompted you to actually start a coaching business and really throw yourself into it? Sure. Uh, what happened is when I was, um, 56, I reached my minimum retirement age for the federal government. And I was just getting stressed. And I was going to the Pentagon every day for, for work, using riding the Metro. And I saw these people with their headphones in, eyes down, just looking miserable. <clears throat> and then I saw the train, my reflection in the train going by. And it's like, oh, I look like them. And there's got to be more to life than this. I mean, I like I said, I I have a hyperachiever saboteur in my brain that says achieve, 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 achieve. And none of that brought me happiness and joy. And I was, and I was looking for it. And as a hyperachiever, I tend to avoid my feelings, not even in touch with my feelings and relationships aren't always the best either because hyperachievers tend to put um, achievement before anything else. That's what's most important, not relationships, nothing else. So I kind of knew some things about myself, but I thought that's just the way I am. And I didn't know how to change it. And so I decided I wanted to become a coach and it was just, it's interesting. I was just telling somebody the other day, I thought I'm going to help people. I don't know what my niche was going to be, right? I'll help people with time management. I know how to get a lot of stuff done and I can help them get more done in a day. Mm -hmm. And now it's um, a complete 180. I'm more about being, being who, who are you being as you're going through your day? And what really changed my life about where I wanted to go with my coaching is, well, first off, why did I start coaching is because when I was retiring from the government, everyone told me what I should do. You mm -hmm. should go be a government consultant. You should do this. You should do that. And being a pleaser, having a pleaser personality, I, I've tended to do what others think I should be doing my whole friggin' life. And I'm like, wait, I want to figure out what I want to do. I don't even know what it is. And then about three weeks after I retired, my daughter called me and told me that her dad, um, my children's father, we, we were divorced, but had cancer. And then two weeks after that, he was paralyzed in both arms. And five months later, he died. And I saw him die with regrets. He didn't get to retire. I was the executor of the state. I've got his files right here. He had all these files on retirement. Mm -hmm. and so that's why I coach people now on create a life you love living now. Not when this, this, or this happens. Mm -hmm. How can you love your life today? And a lot of that has to do with our thoughts and our limiting beliefs. So I've gone from helping people achieve, achieve, achieve to that. And also realize that there can still be tremendous achievement 
that yeah. starts with exactly what you're talking about. Start with how you feel about your day to day. Start now loving the life that you live. And it's like people think that it has to be one or the other. And no. it's way past time for us to realize it does not have to be that way. I love I love that. And I'm I'm sorry to hear about your loss, but it's it's beautiful that you you've turned it into part of your motivation for this whole new stage of your life and this whole new way to help people. It's just, yes. I mean, it's, it's, it's amazing. And I, I, I have to say, it's like, I, I love your story and it's both special, but also like, I find so many coaches that are just, they have a story similar to that where they just, they had this moment of realization prompted by something. And sometimes it's a long career in some other field or, you know, feedback from valuable, like confidants and, and trusted family or friends where they just like, they just had this dawning realization. It's like, oh, things can be different and I can help them be different for myself and for other people. There's just these series of ands. It's just like, oh, okay. I always thought it was either or. And then nope. it just goes from there. <laughs> right. And, and, and I would say that I have worked with a ton of coaches since I retired about two and a half years ago, almost three, a ton of coaches so coaches help accelerate that success. Mm -hmm. And, you know, as a coach, I still have limiting beliefs and thoughts and stuff that I need to work with a coach on, that I choose to work with a coach on. And that makes me a better coach. It's this mm -hmm. virtuous cycle. It really is. I mean, I hate, to, I hate to make it paint it so poetic, but it really is the, it's the way that we help each other and help others. And it's just like this, I, I often find myself reflecting on the, uh, the analogy of a rising tide raising all boats. It's, that's really, that's been every single experience I've had being coached, working with coaches has been exactly that. You could just, you can feel it. You could feel that water level rising. And it's just, it's great it is. <laughs> to put it mildly. Um, I want to tee you up a little bit. And I think we've already touched on certainly some of it, especially based on your experience, but what would you say uh, about your coaching business that is unique or special to your, um, your abilities and your experience? I think we've already touched on that a little bit, but go on about that a little bit more. If you would. Yeah, I would just say that, you know, it's not that I'm telling, I'm, I'm coaching people on something I've never done. Mm -hmm. I'm coaching people on exactly what I've been through. And I might just be a step or two ahead or, you know, our journeys might be a little different, you know, in, in you know, in terms of our realization, but um, and, you know, people can relate to me and not everybody can, but, you know, but my, what makes me unique is, you know, okay. I went to the Naval Academy. I was in the sixth class of women to graduate. I've raised, um, a son who's an al who's an alcoholic and he's been five years sober. My daughter, um, had some issues too with anxiety. She was raped when she was 15. You know, all these experiences that I've been through in addition to, making senior executive in the Navy, but then also my marriage failed, two of them. So, you know, it's like, there's a lot of experience that I can pull from that can, can help others and in a way that I can relate to other people as well. That's yeah. I think that's what makes it. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. Just, and you're also, I, I gotta say you're, you're admirably open and vulnerable, yeah. like right from like, just so that the audience knows, like we talked for maybe a couple minutes before this recording <laughs> and this is our first meeting. And I just, I, I really, I'll, I'll tell you what it engenders in me immediately. I immediately have this, like, I don't know if you'd like, I just kind of subconsciously, I noticed myself leaning forward as you were talking and just listening and kind of connecting with, you know, your story with mine, even though they're so different. I'm like, okay, so yeah, it's definitely like, there are these high highs and these, these challenges that we've gone through and just your ability to go right to them. And for yeah. me, like, I feel, I feel connected with you in a way that like, I feel like we just have, we've had hours of connection that just happened. In minutes. <laughs> well, we didn't really connect too much because sometimes what I do, well, I have a meeting coming up, but then the oh. other thing is, is, you know, my hyperachievers like, okay, let's get right to the interview instead uh -huh. of, you know, I don't tend to, and I, some, sometimes I'll catch myself. It's like, well, what about the relationship? You know, what do you know about Kevin? You know, all that. I don't, I don't always make the time for that. I'm aware of it. And it's something that I'm continuously, you know, working to improve and I can improve. But uh, yeah, I think the, one of the reasons why I'm so open is on, on the day after I retired from working for the Navy for 34 years, I published a podcast. Hmm. And so my podcast is called the Onward Podcast. And it's an interesting how it is, how it, the theme has changed initially. It was about facing adversity and moving forward because look at all the adversity I've been through with my son and a divorce and, and everything. And then Bruce got sick and then there was more adversity. And then I changed it to 
facing adversity, moving forward, we're moving onward mm. and discovering ourselves along the way. Mm. Then I changed it just now. Last night was my first one to, uh, it's called Onward Live because I broadcast it live and it's called, it, the subtitle is Create a Life You Love Living Now. And that's despite the adversity, despite whatever's going on in your life. How do you love your life today? no matter what all the circumstances that are going on. And it's all followed the journey that I've, that I've been on that kind of dictates that. And I've interviewed so many people that have been my coaches too. And I've shared my, my story on the podcast. So. I love the, the urgency. It's like just the, the little simple word, three little letters now, like a lot of people, especially in like coaching and self-help and just self-improvement and just the general like seeking of a better life. They forget to add the urgency to it. It yeah. doesn't have to be tomorrow. I mean, but you acknowledge also that it is a process. You know, it right. is a continuing journey. Start now. Don't start right. next week. Don't start next New Year's with the resolutions. Don't start on your birthday or the day after your birthday. Now. There's yeah. no, no better time than right now. I, lo I love that that's just right there in the title of your podcast. And it's quite frankly, it's in everything that you're saying in saying and doing yeah. here in this podcast. It's, 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 it, took a, it took a while to get to that. So the thing is, as a coach, you know, people starting their own business, you have to start. It's like, <laughs> well, look at Emily. She knows exactly her, her target audience and everything. Well, look where I started. My target audience is going to help people how to find more time in their lives to get more stuff done. Mm -hmm. And now I'm like, I don't want to do that much stuff. I want to be, or who am I being as I'm getting this stuff accomplished? And I'm still getting quite a bit accomplished, but who am I being in the process? And how well do I know myself and, and all those things. So yeah, it's, um, it's just been an awesome journey. <laughs> and, and you were saying, that. we're saying that now. So I, earlier I had a call with somebody and they were trying to decide if they wanted to sign up for my coaching program, which is on um, mental fitness, um, improving our ability to catch these saboteurs of our mind. Like I have a hyper achiever, um, I also have um, a pleaser. So how, some, some of, somebody else might have victim or hyper um, aware, you know, there's different saboteurs kind of in our mind. And so this person was thinking about whether or not they would sign up and they cited all these external circumstances. It's, it takes about 15 minutes a day, this program. Okay. So they cited all these external reasons why they would going to wait. Hmm. And in the past, I would have let that go. But as a coach now, I'm like, there's another way to look at it. And, I, I, and I'm not here to pressure you to sell, but another way, what's another way of looking at it? It could be that because of all these outside circumstances, am I the way I'm reacting to them? I want to strengthen my mental fitness because those outside circumstances are never going to go away. They're going to change. Life will change. COVID hits, then this hits, then that hits. When is the right time to start? It's now. Mm -hmm. It's always going to be a reason not to, but that mm -hmm. also means there's always going to be a reason to do it. Now. Yeah. I love that. So I didn't push, push it, but just helping with seeing other perspectives. Yeah. yeah. Just reframing slightly. Just you right. know, ask inviting, them to con inviting them to consider it. Yeah. Whether instead it instead of why not? not now, just how about why not now? Right. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I know we're getting pretty close to your, to your next meeting. So I want to give you a chance. You talked about that mental fitness program. We talked about your podcast. Is there anything else you want to talk about? Let listeners know about maybe where to find you on social media, if they want to really connect and start a conversation and maybe a little bit more about your, you know, your website, anything else you want to, you want to put out? Yeah, there? I'm working, I'm working on updating my website. You can uh, get to it just by going to Emily Harmon, H-A-R-M-A-N.com. And if you connect with me on LinkedIn, um, you will see when I typically see when I go live, I typically go live with my show on Wednesday nights at seven 30 okay. and that's called onward live. And then I take that same audio and I repurpose it as the onward podcast. That's what I've started doing now. Um, and I'm almost, you know, so I've been coaching for a little over a year, but, I, but when I was an executive with the Navy, I was mentoring and stuff, but coaching's different. So I'm getting ready to be, you know, certified in like three, three or four different areas. You know, there's my hyperachiever, right? One of them is mental fitness. Uh, I've been studying that for a year. So getting ready to go, I can still be a coach, but I'm getting ready to be certified coach. Another one is International Coaching Federation certification, which it requires a lot of 
practice coaching and stuff. And another one is um, an energy leadership index practitioner, which is help how we, um, how do we experience life at what level of energy? And there's about seven levels of energy. And then it also measures, you know, how do we experience life under stress? Mm -hmm. And how do we become more aware of ourselves and how we're responding to situations and how can we choose to respond from a, a different level of energy? which when you're at a higher level of energy, like not in the victim mode, but you're looking for possibilities, you're better able to come up with solutions to all these outside circumstances and problems that you're facing. So those are some of the things I do. Um, feel free to yeah, <laughs> go to my website. And, <laughs> you can go to my website and schedule like a 15 minute meeting with me if you want to just have a discussion. And then we can, uh, if you want to learn more about my coaching programs, I have a program called the Onward Accelerator Program, which is all about guiding you towards creating a life you love living, which would look completely different than mine. But how many times do we stop and ask, what would I love? Mm -hmm. Or if you do say, well, what would I love? Oh, yeah, I would love to have this, this, and this, but it can't happen. Okay. Hmm. I guess it can't because you say it can't. What if it could? What if it could? Oh, what a perfect way to end it with clarity and possibility. Um, I know you've got a bit of a heart out, so I will, I will let you go now. Thank you so much for being on this short and hopefully very sweet little podcast episode. I really appreciate it. And I hope everybody else out there listening appreciates it as well. Thank you so much, Emily, for being here. Thank you, Kevin.